if you watch my videos, you probably noticed something different already. And they're saying, Rob, those handlebars are black. And those tires are skinnier. What's going on? Well, I did a thing. I don't know how it happened, but I did it. Hey, hey everybody, it's Rob and John, and uh, we are doing... <laughs> we are having a little bit of fun today. So, as you know, 2021, it is the middle of a pandemic, and if you're shopping for a bike, you know it's darn near impossible to find one. And if your bike breaks down and you need parts, you know it's going to be hard to get those. All of that happened to me, but fortunately I was able to find something. So we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. So I know the question that needs to be answered is, Rob, how'd you get a new bike? Why did you get a new bike? Well, the Farley kept breaking spokes, needed to go in the shop. And I'm celebrating being down 55 plus pounds. Um, so, I had an opportunity and I took it. <laughs> That's why. Uh, tell you a little about my criteria in choosing a bike this time. As you know, I had a lot of enduro type bikes over the years. And really enjoyed them. So why go backwards and get a smaller travel bike and that answer is really simple I'm no longer riding as a former downhill racer former this that or the other I am riding as a 51 year old man who loves riding on trails so that was the desire for a trail bike. I wanted something lighter. I wanted something that promoted riding longer and felt stable. And that was what steered me away from doing any kind of an enduro type bike this time. Really wanted to go towards a trail bike to have those criteria met. I also wanted a bike that if I felt good enough and wanted to get a little tiny bit rowdy as a 50 year old man, not as a former blah, 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 but just to enjoy being on the trail, I wanted a bike that was stable and overall good and so that was what prompted me to go with a trail bike weight desire to stay on it longer ride longer distances and just overall feel A little test of climbing here. Huh. <laughs> 
So there are obvious differences climbing with this as opposed to a rigid fat bike. But to be honest, 29er really huge benefit in climbing over all my last bikes or 27 fives. The one thing I'm noticing too on this bike is there's absolutely no pedal bob on it as I go along, which I haven't, I have one ride in prior to this, just setting everything up, but uh, I haven't really spent time tuning the suspension and I'm really impressed. One thing I'm noticing too on this bike is there's absolutely no pedal bob on it as I go along, which I haven't, I have one ride in prior to this, just setting everything up, but uh, I haven't really spent time tuning this suspension and I'm really impressed. It's smooth and supple and doesn't give you any trouble. So a little downhill test here. And I'm not going to push too hard because I'm still getting used to knowing the tires. And uh, the feel of the bike though is so nice. So smooth. One thing I loved about my Remedy that this one is even better is being able to feel suspension through braking, chatter bumps type thing. So this one's even, even nicer. And I don't know if that's a product of the suspension design or if it's a product of 29er tires, or both. But it's really just fluid plush. Oh, you are tall and fast like a gazelle. We're on the old roller coaster to the back nine here. This is some of the more old rugged trail. Get a feel for this on the stumpy. So the brakes are actually an improvement over the guide R's that were on my remedy. Which is really exciting because as we all know I'm not a fan and I was very timid about if I'm buying a bike you know do I have to replace things immediately but fortunately and they're not even fully broken in and seated yet I've been trying to do that as I go along these are a lot more powerful than the old ones the guide arms. Get an idea how this does on the D loop or back nine, whatever they're calling it these days. Honestly, cannot tell you how impressed with how smooth this thing rides. I'm not pushing anything. It's just smooth. And I'm not doing anything to overemphasize. It is just a smooth, smooth 
130, 140 mil travel bike. So for tire pressure right now, I'm running 32 in the front and 35 in the rear. And again, I'm in about 290-ish. <clears throat> so, gives you an idea. I think I could actually be a little lighter in the front, a little lower pressure, which having a fat bike has got me a lot better understanding. It used to be, oh, I'm fat, I gotta pump up the tires. And now, I do think a little bit more about it. So the tires that came on this are the Butcher and the Purgatory. They're 2.3s. And uh, I think they'd be aggressively are suited. Option 9. I think they'd be suited for uh, a little more loose like this here. Uh, loose stuff. So I said I'm still playing with the tire pressure. At this point I'm at 30 in the front and still 35 in the rear. I'm really just focused on the front tire right now and uh, seems to be a lot better. So there's that. So one question I get asked a lot as a big guy talking about, hey, I want to buy a full suspension bike. What should I get? And the common thought is I'm a big guy. I need a lot of travel because I'm going to use it. Well, you buy the bike based on the kind of riding you're going to do, I think you'd be better off. Like I said, this is a trail bike. I'm riding trails. And I'm not having any trouble with the 130 mil travel on this bike. Yep. And some of the tire thing might actually be just getting used to being on a 2-3 tire as opposed to a 4-5 to five inch tire on a fat bike. But still, gonna play things safe. So as I go looking for varied terrain to ride this thing on, I can tell you this. As I'm getting to know gravel riding, I would not hesitate to ride this thing on a gravel ride. So I can find a glaring drawback so far that I can tell you about the Specialized Stump Jumper. Uh, the higher carbon lines, apparently you can stuff stuff, stuff stuff in the down tube. This one you can't do that. But furthermore, I have a frame bag that I use on the other two bikes that makes it easier to carry things if I'm vlogging. Uh, and I can't carry them today. So this is gonna require some thought. I'd love to give you guys some more B-roll footage and I'm sure I will uh, at some point give you the B-roll footage to show you what I'm talking about where the suspension's not bobbing under a load of a 290 pound guy pedaling it and it's just doing its job when it needs to. That is a drawback, a negative on Specialized to not make a bike that I can put a frame bag on. I'm sure they were thinking of vloggers and guys with YouTube channels when they put it together. Um, carrying their stuff was clearly a priority for them to think about. Um, maybe I'll just have to find out what other guys are doing. That's an idea. Because there's other guys riding these. But honestly, that is the only drawback I have found in the 20 plus miles I now have on this bike. Is that I can't put a frame bag on it. So that right there is a wrap on my first impressions of the 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper Comp Aluminum. It is very rare that you can hop onto a bike and just feel at home immediately. It's also very rare that you can jump onto a bike and say, 
I don't really need to change anything right out of the box. And it's even more rare that you could find a bike in the middle of a pandemic that's in your size. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited that I struck gold on all three of those. I've got uh, almost 40 miles in on it so far in two rides, and I'm so impressed with this thing. So short answer is, can a fat guy ride a trail bike? Yes. Does this fat guy love this trail bike? Yes. Would I do it again? Yes. So that's a wrap. Anyway, live the faith, ride it out. Hope to see you on the trail. That's Mark Milam. No keeping up with him. 